Hi there, GEPF member. It's Devon Nyker from Retirement Wellness SA. Now, as you know, I specialize in helping government employees make one of the most important decisions, which is whether you should retire or resign from the GEPF. Now, at this point in time, I'm addressing a question that was raised by me from a member. And the question is this worry or concern about losing out on cap leave as a result of making the decision to resign. So today I wanna to share with you five solutions with which you can overcome that issue and five solutions that's gonna give you more control over that cap leave. Now, at this point in time, perhaps you're thinking that resignation is a better route for you. It's something that's more appealing. Maybe you like the flexibility of resignation. Maybe you like the, the benefit of being able to leave some kind of legacy for your family. Whatever your reason is for choosing resignation, there's a part of you that might be feeling concerned or worried or just feeling like you're losing out because now you're not able to gain the cap leave. This video is going to help you immensely. Let's start to have a look at each of the five options in more detail. So the first strategy that I want to share with you, actually, even before we get started, I want to analyze exactly what you are losing out on, because from a tax perspective, we need to understand how your cap leave is being treated. And this example is going to help uh, provide that light to you. Let's assume that you are earning a salary and it's a salary of 25,000 rand a month. For the year, your salary is going to be 300,000. So that's a whole year of income. It comes to 300,000. And I'm going to assume that your cap leave, I'm not sure the number of days, but I'll assume that your number of days is 100. And I'm going to also assume that the RAND value, the RAND equivalent of that, of that cap leave, I'll assume is 150,000. Now, remember, you'll do your own calculation based on what is correct for you. So what I may a quick recap, you've got a salary of 25,000 a month. For a year, it comes to 300,000. And the cap leave we're saying works out to 150,000. Now, from a tax perspective, when SARS is analyzing this, they are going to add up the salary that you are receiving together with your cap leave. So both amounts get added up, which means for that tax year, your tax is now calculated on an increased amount of 450,000. What it means is you are now gonna be taxed on a higher scale, on a higher rate. So if you know how our tax system works, we've had a look at it previously, but it's a sliding scale. The more income you earn, the more tax you are going to pay. So naturally, earning 300,000 versus 450,000, you are gonna pay more tax on 450,000, which then means we wanna go and analyze exactly how much of this are you losing out on? Because if a big chunk of this is going to SARS, then there's not much that's actually left behind for you to enjoy. So we wanna go and look at that first. Again, in my example, I'm gonna assume that the, we don't know exactly what the tax rate would be, but let's just assume your, your tax on the cap leave is 50,000 in my example, right? Let's say example, 50,000. So now this brings to light exactly how much you're losing out on. So in your mind, perhaps you're concerned of 100 days and that's 150,000 rand value. But in reality, after the tax is taken out, what you're actually losing out on is 100,000 using this example. So we know you're losing out on 100,000 because that's the difference. Now let's go and have a, have a look at those five ways, bearing in mind what we are trying to overcome here is not gaining 150, but we want to gain 100,000. So what, what are the ways in which we could gain that 100,000 so that you don't feel that this is going to be a loss to you? Uh, now that we've put this into perspective and we've been starting to talk about tax, I want to keep it on the tax side. Because if you plan your resignation well, and if you've joined the masterclass, you would have had the tips that I share with members on how to do this. There are multiple ways in which you could save easily 100,000 in tax. So that's your first technique. Your first technique is tax savings. 
Remember with resignation, you have a great deal of flexibility. You've got a great deal of control. So you could adjust your plans. You could adjust your, your resignation plans to save on tax. And this could be, I'll use some examples for you. One could be on your lump sum. So remember, at the time of resigning, you are allowed to take a portion of that in cash. It could be up to one third. That is a taxable uh, benefit. But because resignation is flexible, you can adjust that lump sum and take an amount that's below the tax bracket. Therefore, you're not paying tax on it. And that saving can easily accommodate for this, depending again on your values. So you can cover. So that's one solution. The second solution is the tax on your income. This is an advanced solution. So in this one, the focus is every month you are earning an income and that income, if it's above the tax threshold, you're going to be taxed on it. But resignation allows you a way to adjust that income. And by adjusting the income, you can create additional tax savings. Now I'll go through this in greater detail inside the masterclass. But these two techniques alone will result in a significant saving for you from a tax perspective, which then can easily accommodate for this figure that you're losing out on the cap leave. Okay. So that's your first one. And this is in terms of your tax leave. Let's go and have a look at the next option. And this is in terms of your gratuity and the lump sum. Now I go through this in great detail in the masterclass. I won't cover too extensively here. But what we've discovered is your gratuity that you are collecting is less than the one third that you receive if you had to resign, which then means because your gratuity is less and this is more, you now have access to this figure. So as long as this figure is more than your 100,000 loss here, you are gaining in value. I'm going to use an example, but naturally we'll have to do this in the masterclass or we'll use it using your own benefit. Let's assume your gratuity is, I'm just again using an example, is 500,000. But the actual one third value we'll assume is 750,000. Now, what it means in this example is there's a gain here of 250,000. And this can only be available if you are resigning, which is enough to cover this loss. So that's a second key way in which you can recover in terms of your cap leave. So this was your second option. Then let's have a look at the third option. And the third option comes in the way of your capital. So on the one end, we're focusing on the loss of 100,000, which is in terms of cap leave. But that loss means that you gain on your capital. And what is that capital? So remember your resignation value, there's a portion of it that you are taking out in cash and a portion of it that you're going to invest. I'm going to assume that's your two third portion. Now, at some point in time that you are not around, the, if you had retired, your entire capital's lost in return for that, depending if you pass away within five years, you know that your spouse would receive a lump sum that's equal to your five years income or the spouse is also, and the spouse is also going to get a monthly income. But you could have a case where there's no spouse, in which case that now becomes an issue or concern. It becomes a loss. But if you are resigning, you still have access to your entire capital. In fact, there are many techniques as I go through in the masterclass where you can start off with this as your capital and you can actually grow the capital. And if you are able to do that, growing that capital can easily accommodate for this 100,000 that you're not getting on there uh, from your cap leave perspective. So that's your second technique. It's being able to use the benefits that resignation offers you to grow capital, to grow your wealth. And it's gonna be easy to get up to the 100,000 because naturally your this two thirds should be a sizable value again, depending on your years of service. So the next focus that we want to pay attention to, uh, this is probably one that you already know, is you can use it. Meaning right now, 
you can start to make use of some of your days of cat leave. You can schedule that in advance. You can make arrangements within your HR to use some of it. And by you using some of it, it then reduces what you have here. Now, I've seen members uh, do this a bit early. So especially if you, this is one of the reasons why you want to get to know whether you should retire or resign early. And again, one of the benefits of the masterclass that we're able to put you in a position where you can make that call. So if you know a year or two years ahead that you are resigning, you can then start to make use of the cap leave. So if you have 100 days, you can start making use of it. And bulk of it could be done within that period before you actually make the move to resign. In which case, this reduces significantly. And again, your loss re reduces significantly. But you still gain here because you can still use the tax savings. You still gain here because you're still getting a higher lump sum. And you still gain here because your capital can still grow. So you're still benefiting from that perspective. Now, the fifth reason, and I'm putting this out there because I know you are committed at your work and that you love what it is that you do. So if a part of you, you know, a part of you is going to be concerned, if you're going to be taking the cap leave away, it's going to bother you that you're not there for the community that you serve. You're not there for the kids that are in your class. You're not there for the people that you want to help. It's just going to bother you that you're not there to do your job. And even though you're on leave, it's probably going to be in the back of your mind. So the fifth technique is what I call pay it forward. And what I want to share with you here is the universe, and I've seen this in my life, and I've seen it with lots of members as well. What you sow, you reap. What you sow, you reap. And whatever it is that you're putting into your work and your profession right now, even though you might not benefit from it from a RAND perspective. So if right now you don't want to use up the cap leave, you want to still stay committed to your work and continue working and continue doing what you love, that's perfectly fine. Just know that at some point in time, the universe is going to reward you for that. You're going to get some kind of benefit. It might not necessarily come in the way of you receiving this naturally because you're foregoing it. Uh, but it could come in this option. It could come in this option. It could come here or even here. Or even something completely outside of this. Because you know, whilst you are working, there's a deep sense of fulfillment. There's a deep sense of joy. There's a deep sense of happiness. Doing what you're doing. Doing what you love. And isn't that worth a lot more than this loss here? Isn't it worth a lot more? So your fifth way is you can make a conscious decision that you want to still continue with your work. You're happy to forfeit this cap leave, but we're not thinking from it from a loss perspective. We're thinking about giving as much as you can to your community and to your work, to what you enjoy, and also then to yourself. So when you do stop working after you, uh, you, you, you shut off and now it's your time to uh, resign and able to enjoy this, this happy life after work, you then are going to have this deep sense of fulfillment that you're left with everything being 100%. You're not going to have any regrets that there was something that you should have done and you didn't actually do it. So I hope you found this helpful. Uh, these are just some of the techniques that I've identified for members to save on cap leave. Inside of the masterclass, I do this in greater detail and I can actually show you how to get these tax savings if you want to engage with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Now, remember to like the video if you found it helpful. I also wanna hear your comments because you might find other interesting ways in which to save on cap leave. Or if you found this technique helpful, I would love to hear from you. And remember to subscribe to the videos so that you're able to get them as soon as we post them out. Uh, good luck and all the best with your resignation.